Hello guys and welcome to another episode of this FIFA 16 career mode with Manchester United. In this episode we're going to be playing the second leg against Sporting Lisbon. Who's going through the newsreel? Ronaldo debut, one for the future, Ryan Ledson, Cambridge United and Hunter's Choice pays off. Yep, yeah, our boys are surprised. We're how many months into the season now? Now this is February so... We actually beat Sporting Lisbon away on the 23rd of February, which was my birthday. 24th of February is my birthday, so beating Sporting 3 1 in Lisbon the night before my birthday was good. Obviously, it's my in game birthday, it's long since been February. We're, we're a few months behind in this, so I'm having to play catch up. I've named a uh, named a different team, resting players for for the for the next match. We don't really need to win this. We just need to stop them from scoring, stop them from winning three 0 which is very unlikely. They're not going to be scoring three goals against us. Still quite strong side. Schneiderlin played well in the last game, so I've, I've started Schneiderlin again. That William Carvalho is the player that we might supposed to be after as well. Uh, central defensive midfielder Carvalho, Portuguese. We've been linked to him. Uh, and Sporting did actually play pretty well in the last game despite the scoreline, saying 3 1. It did flatter us a little bit. They did actually go in front as well. They were winning 1 0. But we came back and beat them 3 1 in Lisbon. Daniel Sonas Gas Bello. I'm sure some of these referees' names are made up. Sporting Lisbon to kick off inside Old Trafford. A nice Champions League champ uh, European night at Old Trafford again, which we didn't see a lot of last. Well, we haven't seen a lot of for the past three seasons. Oliveira, Wilson, Carrick. Carrick's the captain again. Or Phil Jones, one of the two. Wilson. Joey Pereira. Jorge Pereira. And uh, Sporting Lisbon, I've actually defended pretty well over the two legs. I know it's early in this game, but it did play well. And they're quite quick and they can pass the ball around quite nicely at times. That coach as well, I looked at his picture and he's got a Liverpool shirt in his, in his uh, render. It's not like profile picture sort of thing. In his render he's got a Liverpool shirt on so I think Liverpool might have loaned him out or sold him recently. Or even uh leased him, I'm not sure. Wilson chance here. No. It's cut out by Pereira. Silimani. Silly man, isn't he? Silly money. Teo. William. Default. Teo, 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 it's a good save by Butland. Sporting Lisbon are actually creating some chances. Of course they've got to really, they've got to play attacking. They've got to try and get some goals. If they'd have scored early, maybe they would have gone for it. But 25 minutes in, it's nil nil. You can see their aggregate is 3-1. Winning three goals to one on aggregate, and they are three away goals as well. So, if Sporting are to progress, they're going to have to beat us 3 0. And it doesn't look like they're capable of doing that. Barcelona beating Wolfsburg 2 0, so it looks like Barcelona are going to qualify there against German side Wolfsburg. Actually, look, uh, Wolfsburg did actually beat him in the first leg, but at Camp Nou, Camp Nou, it looks like Barcelona have definitely got the upper hand and turned the tie around, turned the tables, and they've definitely got the advantage now they're going through if it stays like that. Half time, we're still very much in the driving seat going through. I don't think Sporting are going to come out in the second half and beat us 3-0. They'll go out and win the second half 
They might win the second half, but they're not going to score three goals at Old Trafford. No team has done that this season. No team's done that in the game. I think I've conceded t two goals in the game. That's the most I've conceded all season. And that was a 2 2 draw against Southampton, I believe. A couple of months ago. Simone. So they are actually having quite a lot of attacks. That Joey Marino, not Joey. Well, that guy is actually uh, causing a lot of problems. They are attacking quite well and passing the ball around quite nicely. But they've got to go for it. And 65 minutes gone. It looks like Sporting are going to be exiting the cup. That Pereira, Joe Pereira, he's played really well. Probably the man of the match. Probably the best player on the pitch today, to be honest. Schneiderlin's had a good game as well. He did have a good game against Chelsea as well, to be honest. On Chelsea. Crystal Palace, he had a good game against Palace. Did Schneiderlin play against Palace? I might be thinking that, but he has played well recently, Schneiderlin, since he put him back in the team. As well as Herrera. Wilson's pinched it off in there. Can he capitalise? Punish them? No, he's going to have to go away. Has to be a rigged group. Schneiderlin, who's a ball Pretty much everything has come through Schneiderlin other than that. Which Wilson picks his pocket, but Schneiderlin has created a lot so far. Oh, this looks interesting. Teo. I thought his name was Ted, to be honest, but it's Teo. <laughs> so that's a bit of a funny name, Ted. At least Taylor, obviously. And Herrera. That's fine, Stoker. The shoot. Oh, it's hit Jefferson. Mr. Jefferson. South Park. Michael Jackson. Episode. Yeah, Blakey. Blakey. Jefferson. Carlton. That's a good double save for Butland. And that's just at the top. It could have been the uh, catalyst to, for him to get a couple of goals back, but Butland denies them. And it's the last minute, and United will be into the quarterfinal of the Champions League, which we haven't been for a few years now. I haven't even got out of the group stages. We're not even in it next year. Andre Pereira, Andreas Pereira, Andre Pereira even. I don't know why I'm talking about Pereira. He played in the last game against Palace. Well, yeah, he played against Palace. Pereira. That's Ander Herrera. And Lingard with a finish. It's a nice finish. Quite similar to Deli Alli's against Chelsea. It's a nice goal though. And a strong foot across the goalkeeper. Into the far side of the goal. And the players have got the hands on their... I mean the fans have got the hands on the head again. After we've just scored a goal, and that's 4 1 on aggregate, two goals in, in the competition for him. Champions Cup, Champions League. We're not allowed to call it Champions League. If you didn't hear that, I said we're not allowed to call it Champions League because FIFA hasn't got the rights to call it Champions League. PES have got the rights to the Champions League for some strange reason. Yet, yeah, FIFA have got Messi on the front, and they haven't, so. And Messi's got the most Champions League sponsors than any other player. There we go, quite comfortable as you'd expect really, Sporting Lisbon aren't really a powerhouse in Europe so United get past them quite comfortably. It's 4-1 uh, on aggregate, 1-0 on the day, on the night I should say. I didn't mean to run then but if I just go with it. Yes he didn't guard the difference and goal in the very last minute. Aquilani, pretty sure he played for Liverpool as well. Looking very pale. Looked like a vampire when he turned around then. He's captain of the side. Again, this is the team where we've got Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, Nani as well, I think. we see off then. Barcelona ended up beating Wolfsburg 4-0, which is very impressive. As Wolfsburg had a good season. 5-2 on aggregate for them. Man City get past CSK and Moscow quite convincingly. PSG, Atletico Madrid, that will have gone to penalties, so we don't know who's got through yet. I didn't get a chance to look at the other side of the tournament tree. Brackets, tree, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Manchester City versus Manchester United, another big game. It's very, very big. 
uh, at the Etihad Stadium and for those of you that might not know Etihad in Arabic means United so so it's actually the United Stadium there's a table there City 9th United top of course and Leicester 10th it's not very often you see the first 10 the top 10 like that in order usually it shows the first 9 and then wherever the other team are but Cicero in ninth, so it shows the ten first ten places in the league, on top of the table, top end of the table. Sergio Aguero on the bench, Joe Hart on the bench, Navas, Boney, they've got a very strong bench. I'm not sure why Man City started Cabello over Cabello, Cabello. I'm not sure why they start him over Joe Hart, and they've bought Karim Benzema, and they're starting Benzema. Benzema, 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 however you want to call it. Starting Benzema over Sergio Aguero, which is something I wouldn't do. But maybe, maybe they're resting players for the Champions League game as well. Because the BCSK and Moscow. And I think they've got Real Madrid. I think they've got Real Madrid in the next uh, round of the Champions League. In the quarter finals of the Champions League. I think they're up against Real Madrid, so I think they might be resting Aguero. Could be wrong. I'm not sure if the game's that in uh, sophisticated. I'm not sure the game's that sophisticated, but I think the CPU or the AI are uh, resting a few players. Was David Silva's playing? Perhaps their most uh, influential player, Kevin De Bruyne, is playing. So they are playing a strong team still. Me on the other hand, I'm actually resting a lot of players. I don't think, I've, other than Blind and De Gea, I don't think I've got a starting 11 player, senior player. I went with Oh Hander uh, maybe. But I've been saying I thought he was offside there to be honest. Darmian's starting 11, I think Luke Shaw as well actually. But the front four, especially Yanis Oiling or Deli Ali and Rashford they're a uh, second string so I'm resting my key players because uh, that should, he should have scored there on his right foot he just should have took it on his right not his left Rashford perhaps the occasion got to him it's a very big game but he's actually done a lot better in real life than he has for me in this game Sanya comes away with it David Silva is actually causing a lot of problems Benzema is causing a lot of problems obviously it's, it's a bit weird to see him in a Man City shirt to be honest. De Bruyne over the corner. Benzema. I'm not sure why Benzema's not in the box there. He's your only, your only striker and you put him outside the box. I don't like it when he does that. It usually does that for me as well. As the strikers outside the box. Like I said, you should be able to set your set pieces up like you can in Football Manager. But apparently not. Benzema, your best chance of scoring. He's not even in the box for corners, which seems a bit silly to me. It, and especially if you're playing with one striker, he'd be the first person you put in that box. So if anything drops to him, he'll have the instincts to react first. I'm not sure why I'm trying to give City tips on how to score past or score against us. David Silva. Yaya Toure, it's a very strong side, they've got a very good squad actually, I thought that was in then from Benzema, Schneiderlin losing the ball, he's played well recently but not too good there up against Man City, and he's out of position now, he's meant to be a holding midfielder, Man City, we actually beat Man City at Old Trafford 2-0 quite comfortably in the end, as good save from De Gea, and as I Failed to clear it and Fernandinho it's a good goal but should have been cleared. Yanazai should have won the header and should have got it away. He doesn't do doesn't deal with that at all. And uh, Phil Jones could probably do better as well. David De Gea no chance, just turns around and smashes it in. All in one motion again. First time strike. They seem to be the only type of goal that I'm conceding. First time shot, first time strike of the ball. And it's, it's, a, it's only his second goal as well, so it's players that don't score very often seem to be scoring against me. I'm not sure why. 
so we're a goal down Man City just before half time it's a good time for them to score especially at home and as I was saying the Etihad Stadium means United Stadium so the joke's on City a little bit there they're a strange club anyway to be honest I've heard that they're red sauce packets they don't have them red they have blue red sauce packets because and all their phone boxes and stuff are painted blue because they're that bitter and sad that they changed the colours and again United fans wearing light blue and white scarves now I'm, I'm okay with half well I don't even like half and half scarves but that's worse I'm wearing a United shirt and a light blue scarf and we're playing Man City you want to bugger off to the other end of the bloody stadium Yanazai, I mean you can understand it in this game, but they wear them City scarves in every game. That's what they are, City scarves, that's a fantastic goal. Morgan Schneiderlin, take a bow. What a time to score his first goal for us. And as I was saying, it seems players that don't score very often score against me. I've scored with a player that doesn't score very often myself. That's a very good goal. Morgan Schneiderlin works his way into the box and just curls it round. Carbello didn't stand much of a chance, also wearing the number 13 shirt. I'm not sure why goalkeepers are wearing the number 13 shirt. It's a new fashion statement or trend or something. First goal in Premier League against Man City away when we're a goal down. Fair play, well done Morgan Schneiderlin. He's making me think twice about not including him in the side now to be honest. He's definitely making me think twice because he hasn't had much playing time. He hasn't really been on the bench all that much to be honest. As you can see there, our next game. Bayern Munich, that's why I'm resting players, We've got, we're up against Bayern Munich which is going to be very difficult this game we we haven't been a goal down very often this season but we were a goal down against Man City showed good character to come back into the game early in the second half come back straight away equalised and this is a young team as well, it's my second string team they showed good character to get themselves back into this game and also we're still fighting to stay unbeaten oh dear, oh Yaya Toure should have scored that 4 yards out, 4 or 5 yards out Yaya Toure, is offside there is now or is handball? either way, you know should get lucky and get a free kick so there we go Morgan Schneiderlin Deli Alley, Deli Alley to Rashford both teams now setting up on a counter attack it's pretty much end to end football both teams coming into it now we've got the momentum after scoring though we've gone all out attack pretty much to try and win the game which might be a bad tactic because we still want to remain undefeated but both teams trying to enforce a counter attack Man City are playing it around well we're at the back trying to play keep ball so I don't know if they're happy with a point but we're going to try and get all three points and beat Man City away at their place it looks like Man City are happy with a point or they're trying to make us make a mistake come out of position to exploit the this space but we're not going to leave any gaps we're going to try and hit them on a counter attack and pinch the win get all three points but David Silva has been very good this game he's been very good for them very instrumental in creating chances and that's a bad place and a bad time to be to be giving away a free kick bad area no, that's not not even close not troubling the goal at all Morgan Schneider in and what a place and a time for him to get his first goal for us as well talking about place and time that was he's picked his moment hasn't he Deli Ali, Rashford Liverpool 1 Chelsea 1 Coutinho equalises that's got to be a free kick for us again this is a pretty promising position Lingard I think he'll be okay just straightening his boot laces out by the looks of it collar off penalised Blind whips it in and that's not the best free kicks in the world, pretty poor actually just over 10 minutes to go 1-1 one, one. big Manchester derby 
I don't know how people can say Man City have got more fans in Manchester. These are the same people that haven't been to games at Old Trafford, I believe, because every time I've gone to Manchester, there has been a lot of Manchester United fans from Manchester. So if you don't know, then don't say, really. So if you don't understand it, you shouldn't be talking about it. You're just repeating what other people have said and what you've heard. So until you've actually been to Manchester and seen for yourself, then you can't really comment. But there you go. And United fill the stadium of 76,000 every time they're at home, every other week. At Old Trafford, they fill the ground 76,000. And they also, when United go and play Aston Villa away, the grounds are always full no matter where they go in the country because it's Manchester United everyone comes to see Manchester United so we have got more fans and uh, City I've seen their ground half full a lot of the time even when the bomb went off and uh, the Bournemouth match was rescheduled we still had 50,000 people come on a Tuesday night which is our lowest attendance for the last however long, I don't know how long it's been, but 50,000 is our lowest ever attendance for a long time and that was because of the match was rescheduled on a Tuesday night as well well there you go also it was the end of the season and we weren't playing for anything and everyone was probably more excited for the FA Cup than the last home game against Bournemouth and rightly so so the match finishes 1-1 we keep our undefeated streak I'm not sure I'm happy with Kolarov and Schneider in hugging Phil Jones is happy I'm not sure I'm happy with my players being happy that we've only got a point but a point at the head Etihad Stadium ahead of a big game against Bayern Munich and I've rested players as well so it's it's not it's not that really bad it's not the end of the world Man City put out a very strong side they'll probably struggle against Real Madrid now we're going to struggle against Bayern Munich either way but I wanted to keep my players very well rested because I rested them against Crystal Palace and they came back my key players came back against Chelsea and they were very good against Chelsea won comfortably 3-0 in the last episode because I'd rested them in the game before they came back and they played really well obviously Wayne Rooney's still injured he's he's back, I've put him on the bench he's, he was on the bench today but he's still carrying a knock so I didn't want to risk it um, hopefully he'll be ok for the Bayern Munich match so play Bayern Munich next in the Champions League quarter ok really sorry about that, I thought that was the end of the episode but I moved the uh, the audio track down a bit and there's still some space at the end so I'm going to have to talk about this I've, I've moved the audio track so it might not actually match up with the actual video footage now but I'm going to have to deal with that to be honest I'm going to have to live with it I'm having to upload these videos in quite a bit of a hurry because I want to get them up on YouTube today and I've left it pretty late as I said in last episode I've had to leave it pretty late because of the noise outside but hopefully they will still be uploaded and apologies for this cock up but nevertheless I hope you've enjoyed the episode thank you very much for watching and take care and goodbye this time bye